Howdy friends, welcome back to my channel. My name's Luke and today we're going over the five best beginner plants. So stay tuned for more. These naturally are in my opinion. I am not a botanist, I am not a scientist. Everyone's opinions are a little different and my experiences have been slightly different too. So I'm gonna go through my pick for the five best beginner plants. Number five is the Hoya pubicalix. Pubicalix, pubicalix. The reason I've put this on number five is Hoya can be a little trickier than some of the other varieties later on the list. They can be susceptible to root rot if overwatered, but in my opinion, if you let them dry out, they're super easy to care for. With all the vines that usually come in a specific pot, you have lots of new opportunity for new growth, and they might at least have just kind of shot off. The pubicalix specifically is pretty easy to find. You can sometimes find them at like Home Depot or Lowe's, your regular big box stores. I found mine at a local plant store and it was fairly inexpensive, but you can kind of find them at a variety of places. The second reason I put this on the list is I think they're pretty easy to grow. As I mentioned, I have heard they're susceptible to root rot. I've never had root rot on any of my Hoya thus far, knock on wood. But as long as you kind of let the soil dry out, then they're pretty easy overall. This is at number five because at least for myself, when I was a new plant parent, I had a tendency to overwater. So that's kind of the one caveat to this plant is you wanna be careful with the overwatering, really let it dry out. You wanna be able to feel the leaves and feel when they're kind of flimsy or thin feeling, and that's when you know when it's ready to water. But if you can master that, then you're on your way. Hoya can seem kind of exotic in the beginning or seem kind of outlandish, not outlandish, but they seem a little exotic because they vine all over. They get those little bumps where the roots could potentially form if allowed. <laughs> so they seem a little different than traditional plants. So that's also why it's towards the bottom of the list. But I myself am a huge Hoya head, so I had to throw it on the list. Number four on my list are Syngonium. I find Syngonium so easy to care for. I have quite a few in my collection. I have like a pink Syngonium. I also have like just a regular green Syngonium, but they're really easy to find overall. Not as easy as some of the other ones on the list, but pretty darn easy to find. Even when you get into like the rarer versions of Syngonium, such as like the Albo or some of the fancy like hybrids, I don't know if they're hybrids, but some of the fancier Syngonium, they still st tend to stay pretty cheap where some of the other ones later on the list, surprisingly, when you get to the elbows, they tend to get a lot more expensive. Regardless, I feel like people sleep on Syngonium. I think people might either think they're really basic or they just don't think to add them to their collection. I think they're great for beginners and here's why. There's multiple ways you can have them. You can have them grow up a pole or you can have them kind of be more of like a hanging basket. The shape of the leaf is kind of this arrowhead shape, especially in its juvenile form. So that can be really fun and unique, has a definite distinct shape, which is always fun. Some varieties even are bred to stay really small and compact. For instance, I have a Syngonium that I've been growing for quite some time and it still stays really small and compact. The leaves are small, the internodes are pretty small as well. And from my understanding, it's gonna remain compact overall. Another great thing about Syngonium is they're incredibly easy to propagate, at least in my experience. As long as you cut uh, below the node and you give a place for the roots to grow, Basically the success rate of water, I personally water propagate most of my plants. My success rate so far has been 100%. I've yet to have a Syngodium fail, which is great. Also these plants can grow for a long period of time in water. So like I have one up on my wall back here that's been in a, just a little vial of water for much longer than it should be. And it's still alive and even putting out new leaves. And frankly, the plants back there on the wall, I don't take great care of. I kind of just fill them with tap water. I don't even add nutrients. And this one is continuing to put out roots and continuing to put out leaves, which I think is just crazy. The reason this is fourth on the list is like many plants, Syngonium can get a little leggy if they don't get a ton of light, but where other plants will kind of, let's say, let's use Syndap, this is an example. The petioles for each leaf might get a little long and then the internodes between leaves might get long. But if vining, it doesn't look terrible. Or with Syngonium, if they are leggy, the actual petiole will just get super long. So from the base of the plant up to the leaf will just, it'll be long and weird. So it just kind of looks odd. So that's why I placed it a little bit lower on the list. But other than that, I think Syngonium are great for beginners. So find one at your local nursery and add it to your collection. 
Number three on the list are vining philodendrons. So philodendrons such as the Hartley philodendron is probably the most common and the easiest one to find, probably the cheapest as well. I think their heterosium is the type of philodendron I'm talking about. But things like the micans, which a lot of people know philodendron micans, that falls under this kind of general family as well. It's not actually family, but that kind of falls under this general category as well. But mycan can be a little bit more expensive, a little harder to find. There's also like the neon, heterosium, heteracium, however you pronounce it. That one's also fairly easy to find, a little more expensive than the heart leaf, which is just a green color, but still kind of in that general family. I have a few in my collection and I find them extremely easy to care for. They are, in my opinion, marginally more difficult than the next on the list, that's why they're number three, but overall I've had great success with growing them in my collection. If you're a beginner looking to add one of these to your collection, I would start with something like the heart leaf philodendron, just the green variety, or maybe the neon variety, as they tend to be a little bit easier to find. They propagate great in water. I've had great success propagating them in water. They all kind of have very visible aerial roots just by growing. So you can just kind of cut below the node, throw it in the water and you're good to go typically. Also things like silver stripe fall under this category, which are much more expensive and harder to find. Like the Brazil is another one that's a little easier to find, probably a little more expensive than let's say the green variety, but still pretty affordable and pretty readily available. They come in a wide variety, so I think they're a great plant to any beginner collection. Number two on my list are pothos. Pothos I are one of the easiest plants to find. You can basically go to any big box store and find a, a pothos. Typically you'll find the, what the hell are they called? Golden pothos, that's what they're called, even though they're green, they're called the golden pothos. <laughs> You can pretty much walk into any big box store and find a golden pothos for like a couple bucks. They're super easy to find. They are readily available. You can probably get a free cutting from a friend because they're that readily available, right? And they're typically everyone's first plant, or at least a lot of people's first plants. They're super tolerant to overwatering. They're super tolerant to underwatering. That doesn't mean they can't die because they definitely can, but they're just really tolerant to over and underwatering. There's also a wide variety of pothos, like the pothos enjoy, which you can see kind of behind me, which has kind of a green and white marbling, or it's kind of almost like chunks of green and white. It's hard to describe. There's also like the Marble Queen, which can be anywhere from like green with white variegation to almost all white with some green variegation, commonly referenced as like a Snow Queen, but they're all the same plant in essence. But they're all really easy to grow. A kind of rule of thumb is the more white it has on it or the lighter in color it is, the more light it will require. So that's why I typically will recommend a green variety to beginner plant parents because they're just really easy to care for. Water propagation is super simple with pothos. As long as they have a node, they almost always succeed. I have had a few fail randomly. Like usually if it was a really new leaf on a vine that I, you know, just kind of came out and I was trying to propagate that, maybe that would fail. But overall, the success rate is really high. They're super affordable. If you kill it, you can go out and get a new one for a couple bucks. You don't have to worry about it too much. You can kind of learn the ropes with pothos. That's a, it's a great way to learn the ropes. Kind of get your feet wet in, you know, how often you need to water, how, what size pot do you put them in? All of that stuff as you're kind of finding your way in plant collecting, pothos are a great proving ground for that. You can kind of put them on a pole, you can let them vine, there's just a ton of different things you can do with them. So they're definitely a great addition to any beginner plant parents collection. And the number one best plant for beginner plant parents is Monstera Deliciosa. Now hear me out, I know this one is a little off the cuff and might, a lot of people might be like, that's not true, these are these are exotic, or what do you mean it's so, they get so big, or blah, blah, blah. I understand that, but hear me out and listen to why. So first, Monstera overall are pretty tolerant to over and under watering, just kind of, kind of like pothos, right? I've had mine where I've let it dry out all the way almost, and you kind of see the leaves start to droop, and then I'll water it. I've also watered it a bit too much in the beginning, and it did just fine overall. At this point, Monstera Monstera Deliciosa, the regular green variety, are pretty easy to find in big box stores. You can usually find a pretty established plant for, I don't know, I think I got mine for 15 or 20 bucks. So a little more expensive than a pothos, but 
but also it's this giant plant. One of the number one reasons I think it's the best plant for a beginner plant parent is it really gives that like jungle vibe. A lot of people, myself included, jump into plant collecting because you see all these like super aesthetic pictures of people's houses where it looks like a jungle and they're trying to bring nature inside. And that was definitely one of the reasons why I started collecting plants and just having a deliciosa with the fenestrations in the leaves, you just, it automatically transports you to a jungle. They can get quite large, which is nice. Unlike some of these other plants, they do get kind of tall. You can let them kind of vine out or kind of sprawl out, if you will. They don't really vine, they can vine, but in most, home environments, they're not really gonna vine, they're just gonna kind of sprawl. Or you can even tie them up on a pole and let them grow up and then it'll kind of give that, you know, kind of almost palm-esque feel where they're kind of going all over the place. <laughs> Do lots of this. Where they're kind of, the leaves are going all over the place and kind of really covering a large area. It's pretty tolerant to low-ish light. I mean, I wouldn't have it in low light per se, but I had mine when I first got it kind of in a darker corner and it was still hanging on just fine. It was still putting out new leaves. The leaves weren't as large and they didn't have as many fenestrations, but fenestrations, by the way, are like the slits in the leaves, if anyone's wondering, but they still put out new leaves regardless. Also the fenestrations in the leaves, it's another thing to talk about. That's also what gives it that jungle vibe and you just feel like you're in the Amazon with a Deliciosa in your collection. Also another reason this is at the top of the list is it's super easy to propagate, kind of like the vining philodendron I was talking about before. Once they start to grow, each node will start to produce aerial roots on its own and you can just cut right below that node, throw that in some water and those roots will turn into water roots and continue to grow. I recently gave a propagation to my neighbor. She just kind of threw it in some soil, led to its thing, and now it's growing on its own. So really easy to propagate, really easy to make more Monstera if you'd like to get that ultra jungle vibe, or if you want to trim back and share with a friend, that's a great option too. Well, friends, that's all we got today. That's all we got in this video, but the five best beginner plants. What did you think about my list? Do you agree with me? Or are you like, heck no, you're totally wrong. You got those all out of order. Let me know in the comments down below. Let's start a conversation. I'd love to hear from you. If you liked what you saw today, please give a huge thumbs up. Subscribe with the notifications on so you stay in the loop when I post new videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.